The gluttony set was based on actual police crime scene photos, which had to do with a real case of suicide. And the quality of that actual crime scene is what I tried to achieve here in this studio set that we built as if the room had been partitioned and extended and remodeled over and over again by a whole procession of occupants previously so that you got a sense of layering and that the age that had built up in terms of the thickness of paint and the accumulation of grease uh, visually reflected the amount of prehistory and perhaps suggested that there may have been other crimes or events taking place here. It had a kind of a thickness of foreboding that, that you, you could read from the, you know, the caking of the grease on the, the windows. It, it was just the neglect and the obsession of the character that you found who occupied these spaces that was just written on the walls. For the greed murder scene, we made it an elegant office, and it's an elegant office. There's not a lot, you know, you can do with the atmosphere of it. I mean, I could talk about what interested me in the design of that was the articulation of the ceiling beams and the finishes of the wood veneer and the detail of the doors. But it's not very, it's not very powerful compared to a lot of the other design elements. What was interesting was, you know, recreating the composite of that set with the approach from the side door and the back spaces rather than the normal kind of front door entry where you're coming and that was really David's idea that's how he wanted to shoot it and to accommodate that kind of rear entry um, we had to and we ended up deciding to build it because we could never find anything that had that physical layout in an existing location Well, you have in the police station and the library a reflection of the municipal control, the authorities, the established order. It participates also in design elements that have to do with period films, film noirs, particularly in the police station. And we wanted to give them a sense of the precedent of everything that went before in the life of this city. It's a city of, you know, it has a, a kind of history to it, whereas all the murder scenes and the crime scenes were driven, the design of them were, was driven by the characters themselves and they're trying to represent their sins visually in those rooms. There was a big fight with the studio to pay for all that construction. I just said, why don't you just go to an existing location library, you know, like at UCLA or Beverly Hills Library. But they're all very modern and very bright and you couldn't control them uh, as easily and they just didn't have the atmosphere. You know, you just it just wouldn't work anywhere else. It's like, how could you possibly think about doing it somewhere else? <laughs> Except maybe the New York Public Library in Manhattan, which, which I kept pushing for. <laughs> as, um, I thought, well, they'd be so happy not to have to go to New York to do it. They'd be thrill just to build it here. <laughs> In certain cases, the rooms were used as offices, but we were using them as residences. And I think the confusion of that uh, helps to kind of also wrong foot the viewer to the point where you don't really know where you are and the, the danger that you sense from the SWAT team, not knowing what's through the next door is uh, amplified because it's a, not a typical place to live. Right? You're not really sure what kind of a place this is because you're seeing uh, the kind of uh, light fixtures and um, accessories you associate with office building. But the furniture is residential and domestic. So you're not quite sure what's going on here. What we're saying is that this is an office, abandoned office building 
that's occupied by crackheads, and they live there. And you, but you don't know that that's what's happening until you get further. I think the design of the interiors is is always tailored to the victims, and that the people inhabiting the spaces are placed according to their position in, in the world we're living in, this is the place in society. I don't think everyone lives equally. It's a, it's a diverse society and that's part of the problem. There's the haves and the have-nots. The Red Cross idea came from a search for trying to illuminate the environment of John Doe's apartment using a mixture of all kinds of different light sources. I decided that um, because we couldn't use daylight, um, I would use every other kind of source I could find. And so you'll, if you look, there are fluorescents, there are incandescents, there are neons. So it just became logical to have a neon, and when I considered you know, what the neon should be, it just seemed to me that a, a man like him should have a, a neon cross. Well, the approach to the interior is, is very cave-like. And as you move through it, you feel like you're descending into a basement world, um, particularly since we painted all the windows black. Um, there's daylight outside, but we've closed it off, so you're now subterranean. The only light that exists is either artificial, you know, a red neon cross, or a fluorescent tube. But there are also scratchings on the windows of various obsessive symbols of various kinds of graffiti, John Doe's graffiti, that l leak little chinks of light into an otherwise a dark, lightless world, a world with only darkness. We try to achieve in lust the seediest, most indulgent, corrupt environment we could possibly muster, the lowest of the low. It involved working in an existing nightclub basement and adding wall partitions and creating a kind of another labyrinth. The approach to the palette of these scenes is to keep color out of it as much as possible so that the red of the blood stain reads as a really the only color element in an otherwise sepia-toned world. Spoon-feeding the audience enough to keep their attention, letting the story flow from room to room, from clue to clue, and giving you those hints. It's, you're you know, on the trail with the detectives. try to give that flavor of, uh, you know, the importance of the common object. Um, some, some are more important than others, and some are more featured than others, but they all tend to communicate something. And they're thought about, even the smallest detail. There's an idea to it, um, and a logic to it. And the world is constructed around that idea.